When you process events with EventBridge and Lambda, you benefit from the built-in retry and delta queue support from the fact that EventBridge is an async event source for Lambda, which by default gives you two retries on failed events and the option to forward those failed events to a delta queue or DL queue. It's worth mentioning that you can configure the number of retry attempts between zero and two, and you can choose a SNS topic or a SQS queue as the delta queue. But in practice, almost everyone uses SQS here because the purpose of the delta queue is to capture and hold the failed event for some time so you can investigate the problem. Besides the default DLQ mechanism, you can also use Lambda destinations, which was introduced at reInvent 2019, and compared to the original DLQ mechanism, it has some significant advantages. For starters, it's not limited to async invocations, but supports stream-based invocations as well, so it works for functions that process events from Kinesis and DynamoDB streams and it works for both success as well as failed invocations. So it's useful not just as a way to capture failed events, and as such, it supports additional targets besides SNS and SQS, including EventBridge and the Lambda functions, which is useful if you want to trigger some automated response in the event of a failure, or to implement a workflow that chains multiple Lambda functions together. Another advantage for using Lambda destinations is that after the built-in retries, the DLQ would receive the event that the Lambda function wasn't able to process, but it's up to you to figure out why the event couldn't be processed, and therefore if it's safe to retry the operation. You typically have to go through your logs to figure out what the problem was, which can be time-consuming and tedious. Whereas with the on failure destination, it captures a lot more information, including the event payload that the Lambda function couldn't process, but it also captures information about the function, the number of attempts, and most importantly, the error and stack trace from the last attempt at processing this event, which saves you from having to hunt for those and figure it out yourself. Which is why you should prefer Lambda destinations over DLQs. Although, it is possible for you to use both together, but saying that, I haven't seen any use case where it actually makes sense to use both. Kinesis is another popular service for ingesting and processing events in real time, and is especially great for cases where you are handling a large volume of events and you need to ensure that events are processed in the same order as they have been received. And at scale, Kinesis is much more cost-effective than EventBridge at ingesting large volumes of data. And unlike EventBridge, where your Lambda function receives one event at a time, with Kinesis, your function receives a batch of events, which is why Kinesis is often used to build real-time applications that need to handle a large amount of data. And when you're building real-time applications, regardless of whether the application is running on EC2 or as a Lambda function, your application should process this event in real time, and for most applications, that means within a few seconds of the event happening. Failures are to be expected, and this failed event should be retried, so long as retrying them do not violate the real-time constraint on the application. In most cases, it's more important to keep the system running and processing events in real time than to guarantee every event is processed successfully. For those events that couldn't be processed, even with retries, there should be a way for you to retrieve them later so that you can retry them manually or to at least investigate why they failed in the first place. Maybe it's the case that the downstream system that these events rely on was having an outage. So once the downstream system has recovered, we can manually retry these events. Where error handling with Kinesis and DynamoDB streams gets interesting, as far as Lambda is concerned, is that when your function errors, that error is treated as blocking, and Lambda will keep invoking your function with the same failed batch of records until the records either expire from the stream or your function finally process the batch successfully. For instance, Lambda would poll Kinesis on your function's behalf, receive a batch of records, 
If you couldn't process one of the records and you're not handling the error, then the error would bubble up and cause your function to error. Then the next time your function is invoked, it will receive the same batch of records from Kinesis and you will retry the same fail batch over and over until either your function completes successively or until the data has expired from the stream, where the default retention is 24 hours, but you can retain data for up to 7 days at extra cost. What this means is that you need to carefully think about how you should handle partial failures if you do nothing and just let the function error on any unhandled exception then you will have effectively made the choice to retry the entire batch until success, which violates the real-time constraint on your application. And in our case, if for some reason we see a persistent issue with processing one event, maybe because that particular event triggers a code path that is not covered by our tests and is seldom exercised in production, and so we hadn't noticed that in fact our function is missing an IAM permission, for example, so in fact, we will not be able to process this event without some manual intervention. If that ever happens, then our system would appear to be unavailable to our users since no restaurants will be notified of orders and no customers will be told that their orders has been accepted. And that's a far worse consequence than not being able to process that one order which has the persistent issue. In my experience working with Lambda and the Kinesis, it's almost always the case that you should prioritize keeping the system flowing over trying to process every single event successfully. There is, however, some notable exceptions to this rule, which I'm happy to dive into in the live Q&A sessions if that's something that piques your interest. And even if you are confident that whatever issue you are experiencing, it won't be a persistent one, another thing to consider is that when the batch is retried, you need to make sure that the records that were previously processed can either be safely processed again, or you need to have a way to record the fact that they have been processed already, so you shouldn't process them again during a retry. In our case, the notify restaurant and the notify user functions are not item potent as they produce a side effect of sending notifications to the restaurant and the user respectively and you don't want to spam either party with duplicated notifications during a retry. And relevant to this discussion, at reInvent 2019, AWS announced a bunch of new options for managing the retry behavior for stream-based Lambda functions. You now have Delta Queue support, which works in conjunction with the other settings, so that when messages are expired due to age or having failed all retry attempts, they can now be captured in the SQSQ or SNS topic. You can also configure the max number of retries and have the option to split a batch when it errors to help you home in onto the poison message. As an example, if the batch had six records, after the first attempt, it will be split in half so that the second attempt would only have the first three records and then just the first record. And from here, only that first record will be retried up to the configured max number of retry attempts, which only counts the number of attempts for that same batch. So in our example, we start counting when we're down to one record in the batch. So in total, the poison message would be attempted a few more times than the max attempt value suggests. You should use these two options together to avoid otherwise normal messages from being discarded because of a single bad message in the batch. However, even with this option, some messages will still be caught in the crossfire and be processed multiple times as we narrow down to the poison message. So the question about ident potency is still as pertinent as ever. The good news is that there are some ways you can ensure messages are not processed multiple times. You need to remember the unique message ID or sequence number of the events that has been processed already. But where do you save these message IDs? The most efficient option, both in terms of cost and latency, is to cache the sequence numbers that have been processed in the handler function using a dictionary that's declared outside the function body, so it's persisted across invocations. As far as I can tell, there's affinity between the Kinesis shard and the instance of the Lambda function, so this approach works 99% of the time. But if the Lambda function instance is garbage collected, either because you deployed a new version or because it's been running for a few hours, then you lose the local cache, 
If this happens while a batch of records is being retried, then you can end up reposting some messages because you lost the cache of previously processed messages midway through this sequence of retries. So a more reliable option would be to actually save the processed message IDs in the DynamDB table instead. This adds additional cost for the read and write operations and it adds latency for those reads and writes as well. But it's going to be more reliable if it's really important for you to not process the same message twice. Another thing to keep in mind is that when a poison message is eventually discarded, you will end up in your DLQ if you had configured one, and you should. The DLQ message would look like this. The key thing to note here is that you don't get the message body, and you will have to use the shard ID and the sequence number to fetch it from the stream before it's expired from the stream. Finally, another useful option is to start dropping messages when they reach a certain age. That will push those messages into the DLQ and allow you to prioritize newer messages that are more likely to succeed in the event that an insurmountable backlog is starting to build up in the stream and you're not able to keep up. This is a technique that Amazon engineers often use in their own systems, and they discussed it in the Amazon Builders Library as well, which you can read about here. And as for SQS and Lambda, since SQS is a poll-based service, there's actually a cluster of pollers that Amazon operates on your behalf, pulling from the queue and forwarding batches of messages to your function. And when our function finishes with no error, the poller calls SQS to delete the messages. Problem comes when our function errors, and so the poller doesn't tell SQS to delete the messages, even though some of them may have been processed successfully. Those messages would become available after the visibility timeout, and then retried, and then after the max number of retries, hopefully only the poison messages would continue to fail and you will be delivered to the DLQ. Again, you should always configure a DLQ when using SQS. But the fact that the batch fails as a unit means we have to deal with partial failures again. Luckily, the Lambda team has introduced a way to handle these partial failures for SQS functions. In the event source mapping for this function, which configures how a function will process events from SQS, Kinesis, or DynamoDB streams, you can configure the function response types to include report batch item failures. And once you've done that, you'll be able to use the SQS function's return values to indicate which message IDs could not be processed. And the Lambda Polar would know which message IDs to delete from the queue, so the messages that couldn't be processed are left in the queue and will be picked up again later after the visibility timeout has expired. And messages that continue to fail would eventually be moved into the DLQ, but the successful messages would not be processed more than once, which is exactly what we want. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development?